I was always in teams with players like Steve Bruce, Brian Robson, uh, Roy Keane, yeah. Mark Hughes, you know, all these players that I was in awe of, so I didn't want to be in front of the mirror doing my hair before no, I'm course. going out and playing <laughs> on, on the field. So we're going to go through some of your haircuts from the last 20 years. Great. And we want to know your thoughts and what you thought of them then and now. Okay. So we're going to start with the curtains. Okay. The curtains. was big in the early 90s. <laughs> it was. Thank boy you for bands. that. You're making me feel really old. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, boy band hair. Um, was a you know was a big hit with my mum. My yeah. mum loved it. Um, and your mum was a hairdresser. My mum was she? a hairdresser. Still yeah. is a hairdresser, but she did uh, finish cutting my hair when I was like 14. Mm -hmm. Kind of moved on to a, a hairdresser's that was called Christmas Nice time. One John. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Christmas time. Did no. she not ever like cut your hair then? No, just... she didn't. 14 okay. was like a cut off point. Okay. It was a big moment. Yeah. Big moment. <laughs> <laughs> so would you ever go back to this? Um, so I feel like you're kind of... I'm kind of not far from it, yeah. to be honest, but um, probably not. I'm, you know, slightly older now, so mm -hmm. I might have to, you know, be a little bit more mature about it. Matured, exactly. Yeah. So here we've got the buzz cut, mm -hmm. which people named the short Bex and Side. Really? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Yeah, a few headlines over my hair over the years. Mm -hmm. But, um, yeah, I literally went from, obviously, the kind of mummy's boy curtain look to like shaved all off in, yeah. in, in, a, in a weekend. So it was a, it was a big move, but actually a, a one that I'm actually kind of happy I made. Did you get people to take you more seriously, I guess, maybe with that? I like don't know, I, I don't know. I, I'm not sure, to be honest, because it literally went from, you know, a mummy's boy haircut, yeah. boy band so to like skinhead. Like skinhead. Yeah. So yeah, it was a, a bold tougher. move. Mm. Um, this is one of my favourites. Rod Stewart. <laughs> yeah. It's very Rod Stewart. It is. Yeah. Um, and probably most of the guys at school had this haircut. They did, they did. A lot of people in uh, Japan had that oh, really? as well when uh, it was uh, like World Cup time. Yeah. So uh, there's a lot of people in Japan with that haircut. I quite liked it, but... It is a good yeah, haircut. It is. Also, isn't it a bit weird seeing people with your haircuts? A little bit. A little Thank bit. You. It's kind of nice though. Yeah, it makes it's me a laugh. good compliment. Yeah, I don't feel bad yeah. about it. Um, we've got this one, which I feel like you probably had for the longest. Because mm -hmm. I think there was one point where you had something like five different haircuts over 18 months. Yeah, possibly. <laughs> possibly. Um, I quite like this one because yeah. it's very uh, classic. Um, yeah. And I'm of, of the age now where I need to start being slightly more, you know, on the classic side <laughs> more than anything, I'm more mature. So I, I like that one. I think I'll go back to that one at some point. It's it a nice good. one. Yeah. It's like the faux hawk long yeah, quiff on like top. Yeah, I kind of like it actually. And then this looks kind of familiar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean that was when I first joined Real Madrid mm -hmm. um, and I grew my hair out. Uh, couldn't get it into one ponytail for some reason I put it in two. <laughs> so you had it in two. Thought it looked good. Um, <laughs> But uh, yeah, that was that was an interesting one. Are you doing the whole, you know, like in fashion, there's a 20 year cycle. Are you doing that with your hair? So are we going to expect anything? <sighs> well, it kind of looks like it because obviously I've grown it out now. Yeah. You know, it's slightly blonder from mm -hmm. obviously the sun. Mm -hmm. uh, sun in sun and, winter sun. You know, a little bit of uh, <laughs> lemon juice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm not sure I'll go back to the double ponytail, but um, would yeah. you ever revisit any of your other hairstyles that you've had? Uh, probably. Apart Would from you? the cornrows. Corn Those rows. were great. They were great. A good summer, when I was on good holiday. summer hair. Yeah, when I was on holiday. But, meeting um, Nelson Mandela meeting with Nelson them. Meeting Nelson Mandela's probably not the brightest idea, <laughs> but it's okay. It was all right at the time. Yeah, again, classic look. Beard's probably too long. You know, that was uh, it's shortly a good beard, after though. I... Uh, it's a good beard. Yeah. It is a good beard. But I do find with my beard, it, it, it doesn't really grow much. It grows... Instead of growing down, it mm. actually grows out. So it? it's not very... You know, it makes <laughs> me look uh, bigger than I actually am. What, a bit of a chubbier face? A little bit. A little, <laughs> bit, bit more of a chubbier face on that one. <laughs> Amazing. Um, so what's been your least and what's been your favourite haircut? Um, favourite and least favourite haircut? I think the one that I said where I'm going to go back to at some point, side part in, bit of a quiff. Yeah. Um, you know, longer on top and shorter around back, back and sides, but not too drastic. Because yeah. like I said, I'm getting, you know, I'm 42 now, so I have to grow up <laughs> a little bit. 
um, and be more mature. Mm -hmm. um, least favorite, uh, I would just have to say the cornrows mm -hmm. because a um, I did it in the summer. Mm -hmm. You know, happy suns out, yeah. you know, on holiday south of France. Actually, where I had them done, um, it was. I thought it was a good idea, but then uh, playing football and header in the ball, mm -hmm. not a good idea. Oh gosh, very that painful hurt as well. Yeah. yeah, very painful. Painful having it done as well. Yeah, really painful um, having it done. And also meeting someone like Nelson Mandela and looking back <laughs> at the just pictures. That's the best, by the way. Probably, probably <laughs> the the biggest regret I would yeah. say. Um, so not many people have managed to succeed in the sport world as well as maintaining the ability to capture the interest of so many people. Um, why do you think people are so interested and still, yeah, were so interested and are still so interested? I don't know. I really don't. I think, you know, obviously on the sports side, I've played for so many different teams, you know, mm. obviously Manchester United for so many years in, in, in England um, and then obviously moving to Madrid for four years, then going to America. Yeah. Also coming back and playing for AC Milan and mm -hmm. then finishing my career at uh, PSG. You know, it's kind of a, there's a global kind of feel, feel there. So, you know, I've gained a lot of fans from obviously playing for different teams. So I mm -hmm. think that that's part of it. But um, yeah, I think it's, it's also changing hairstyles, yeah. changing, you know, whether I have a beard, whether I don't have a beard. Yeah. There's so many things that I've kind of done naturally over the years that have probably just kept people interested and I think that that's that's maybe part of it I don't know yeah so modern day footballers all seem to have a carefully created wash bag and Jamie Redknapp said you were the one of the first that you know had this right <laughs> okay what when you were an apprentice what did you have in your wash bag back then and I don't think I had a wash bag back in back <laughs> when I was an apprentice. yeah I literally <laughs> used whatever we had in the uh, in the showers at uh, at uh, the Cliff Training Ground in Salford, so that yeah. was. Uh, I don't think I had a wash bag, and if I, if I if I had it done, actually I think I had uh, Adidas products. Did I you? had like Adidas. <laughs> One uh, of the gift sets for uh, Christmas or something. Underarm spray, you know. Yeah, it was a gift set. That's yeah. exactly what it was for Christmas. So um, yeah, I wasn't too much of a. Uh, a toiletry bag person when I was a young kid but uh, obviously that changed. What's your grooming regime? Um, very simple um, mm -hmm. obviously I moisturize every morning uh, I shower of course. That's um, good to know. <laughs> uh, in, the, yeah, in the range we have like a, a beard balm which uh, which I, we kind of introduced and mm -hmm. uh, bought in because I, I've never I haven't seen one. Well, I, I like, discovered beard balm and beard oil a couple of years ago yeah. um, and never thought about using it, but then got quite obsessed with yeah. uh, using it because I've always got, you know, a bit of scruff. Yeah. Um, so uh, it always needs to be kind of, and I felt that using the balm and using the oil actually added to it. So, yeah. and it actually smelt nice as well. So, uh, cause that's one thing Victoria would turn around to me. She's like, mm -hmm. you need to either shave or like, you know, moisturize your beard yeah. because it's quite rough. And that was, that kind of led me into putting it in the range. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, so yeah. Um, but what I also find really interesting is like the beard balm, not many grooming ranges have that. No. So it's quite nice to offer that. It is nice and you know we wanted to, you know with the range, I actually wanted to kind of um, make guys feel that it's kind of a community, mm. you know, kind of a team, you know, that's why we named it House 99. Um, House kind of, it just feels like a community um, mm. and that's what I wanted to bring into this and yeah. obviously having the beard balm something that's not usually in ranges and I think that that's why that's why we wanted it in yeah and you named it house 99 after well, a great you know, year well, <laughs> well 99 was such a important year for me uh, yeah. for many different reasons it was important for me off the pitch and on the pitch because mm -hmm. 98 obviously because of what happened with the red card was yeah. such mm -hmm. a difficult tough year for me 99 was kind of my coming out of you know the difficult time yeah, you know yeah. I, I became a man with having my son yeah um, and obviously we ended up winning the treble mm -hmm. so it was kind of such a big year for me on and off the field um, and it's an important it's an important number yeah yeah um so why has it taken you so long to come out with grooming products so you've had your fragrances so uh, I just think that um, it felt right and I, I just think that we've uh, with the business side of things, you know, obviously I retired five years ago from playing, 
And on the business side, I think you have to be really careful about <clears throat> what you bring into the market, how yeah. much you bring into the market, and doing it at the right time and it feeling authentic. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't want to bombard your customer, you don't want to bombard people with, because going back to what you said, you know, why, why are people still so interested after so many years? Yeah. I think it's because, you know, we don't specifically sit down and say, okay, this is the plan, this is when we're going to bring out hair products, this mm -hmm. is when we're going to bring out, you know, um, grooming products. We kind of just do it naturally, yeah. um, and I think that people see that. Um, so it just felt the right time to actually do it. Yeah. If you could use one of your products for the rest of your life, which one would it be? Um, do you have a favourite? Well, like a favourite child? Think that, <laughs> yeah, someone asked me that the other day. Did they? Or not. Someone was oh, no. like, okay, this is a question that we know you know the answer to. That's bad. But they was like, who's your favourite child? I was like, really? I always you wonder though. Really? Do your parents actually have favourites? Well, I personally don't. <laughs> no, you have to say that. I don't. Um, I hope my parents don't. Well, they I probably don't, do, though. I don't know. Yeah. I think I would be my parents' favourite child, personally. <laughs> it's one of those things you just never want to admit, no, though, I guess. I am joking. My, <laughs> my sisters will see this, and you know, they know I'm joking, but uh, they'll say the same thing. Yeah. Um, favourite? Yeah. I, I would have to say the moisturiser, because... Okay. Um, I use that every morning. Yeah. Um, and obviously, sometimes I have a bit of scruff. Sometimes I have, I always have some kind of. But mm -hmm. obviously, with it being longer, the beard oil is something that I think is because it just it just moisturises the beard, and, yeah. and the beard balm yeah, obviously yeah, yeah. makes really it a little great. bit softer. So yeah. Were there any products that almost made it? Um, no, you know, we were very we worked very hard on the range yeah. um, to understand what's going to be in the range. Mm -hmm. The, the sticking point was actually um, naming them. Okay. You know, a lot of the names. So the, the names are really interesting, actually. Yeah. Because they're not what you would usually... No, they're not. Yeah. But obviously, there's a, if you think about all the grooming products that are actually out in the market, mm -hmm. and the names of the grooming products that are out in the market, yeah. it's very difficult to tie, you know, names down. And yeah. I think that that's why it was very kind of not not last minute but literally last week we were still saying really? okay are we are we right in calling this what we're calling it so it was um the naming the naming side of it really was uh really was a difficult part yeah um and in terms of grooming like past grooming regimes or mm -hmm. things that you've done what's the most extreme thing you've ever done for your uh, most extreme thing did you have to trial out a lot of stuff to... I did, and that was that was the fun part of it, yeah. to be honest, because I was able to go to Paris, we went to the factory, that's I amazing. met all the guys that are, that made the product. Oh, that's so nice. I, I kind of became them for the afternoon, which yeah. was amazing, because they're such experts in everything. And obviously, I had my ideas of what I like, and the smells that mm -hmm. I like, and the kind of textures that I like, but obviously some things just don't work with obviously with the product so um that was the fun part of it yeah. you know being able to spend the day in paris being able to um you know meet the people that are actually making the products and 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 sitting down with the experts yeah. and that was that was that was a fun part because it's so interesting seeing things go from brief to actual yeah, yeah. product and and we have been working on this for a, a good few years yeah, so I it's know. Uh, so it's something that we're actually excited about exciting, proud of yeah. um you know and interesting to see how how it does yeah and so i'm guessing you're very happy with how the products have come out we're really happy I and mean, you know I, I i always say that i have to be proud about you know the stuff that we bring into the market the stuff that i'm involved in yeah um and one of the other things why you know the stuff that we've done over the years has been successful is the fact that i am involved you know mm -hmm. it's not something where i just give my name and say i feel like you're whatever. not that kind of I'm not that kind that. of guy, yeah. so uh, I like to be involved, I like to be over every detail. Yeah. Uh, if you ask the guys that have been involved with this, mm -hmm. with me, they'll say I'm too involved because <laughs> I do literally go over every single detail. That's a good thing, but definitely. It's a good thing. If it you're putting a your name thing. or something, then yeah. Well, I'm passionate about it, and it's not just a face-off, mm. it's a partnership, yeah. so, um, so I'm invested. Yeah. Um, you've got a lot of things going on at the moment. So mm -hmm. you've got your Miami football team and yep. your stadium and everything. Yep. Then you've got Ken and Kerwin. Yep. And now this. Mm -hmm. How do you manage your time? 
Um, very carefully because yeah. obviously I have four kids yeah. uh, and that's always my priority but um, you know they also understand that daddy still works and mm -hmm. daddy has commitments and obviously I, I, I travel quite a bit uh, in promoting you yeah. know the things that you've talked about you know obviously Miami has, has been going on for quite a few years mm -hmm. and uh, probably the most frustrating one but also could be the most uh, rewarding in the fact that it yeah. keeps me involved in the game um, and keeps me involved in America with the MLS, which is something that I've always supported. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the scheduling part is is a difficult <laughs> one because, you know, like I said, my priority is my children um, and my family. Um, but then I'm still committed to the business side and, uh, you know, we make it work. I think, you know, when I travel, Victoria's mm -hmm. at home. When she's yeah. traveling, I'm at home. So there's always one of us with with the kids um, and that's nice. the important thing to us. Well thank you yeah, so much. You're welcome. <laughs>